Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for June through September. Over the last 30 days, we've seen generally warmer conditions across much of the West, with the exception of parts of far western Nevada. Precipitation, however, has been generally below normal over the southern half of the Great Basin for the last 30 days, and near normal or above normal in some spots over the northern half of the region due to continued showers and thunderstorms heading into June. Since the beginning of the water year, October 1st, we had obviously quite a bit of winter precipitation, so well above normal precipitation across much of Utah, Arizona, into the central and northern half of Nevada, and also even into parts of eastern Idaho and western Wyoming. Some of the drier spots through the last 12 months or last six months or so has been over southern Nevada and over parts of central and southern Idaho. The precipitation in the monsoon last summer was very high, especially across the western half of the Great Basin. Nevada saw well above normal precipitation for the time period from early July through October. Similar conditions, maybe just a little bit less further east over Arizona and Utah, but still plenty of monsoon precipitation last year. Drier conditions up north into Idaho. If we combine the monsoon and the winter precipitation, you can see where all the good precipitation has occurred, mainly over the southern two-thirds of the Great Basin, but again still encompasses parts of Idaho into Wyoming as well. So looking at some of our fuel situations and why all this precipitation matters, we did have some carryover fuels coming into this season from last year, mainly in these darker blue areas over the Snake River Plain in southern Idaho and over parts of northwest and western Nevada. So these areas are where we will likely to continue to see fires pop up here over the next several weeks while other fuels that are growing finish the green up process and cure. Even with the moisture we are seeing in those dead carryover fuels, obviously they're dry and ready to burn given the right conditions. So that's likely where we'll see those fires pop up before conditions really dry out across the Great Basin. Elsewhere, really not much carryover to speak of. And much of this carryover in Western Nevada was compacted by the winter snowpack down even in the lowest elevations for extended periods of time. So it's really far Northwest Nevada and Southern Idaho that really have those carryover fuels that didn't see quite as much snow compaction from the winter. So looking at our current snowpack, you can generally see obviously we're still well above normal for the time of year, but conditions are definitely declining rapidly with the warm temperatures and even the continued precipitation we have from thunderstorms that is just accelerating the snowpack um, melt off. So we will continue to see that snowpack obviously go down here in the coming weeks. So as the snowpack decreases and we continue to get thunderstorms, sometimes producing brief periods of heavy rain. We will continue to see flood impacts across the Great Basin. The National Weather Service will be issuing the flood watches, flood advisories, and urban and small stream advisories. So definitely pay attention to that. Those will change obviously with the weather and each day depending on what areas get the rainfall and how much melt-off we see. But we'll continue to have these impacts from the potential of both flash flooding and river flooding for the next few weeks until we really see this snowpack drop off. So looking at some of our fuel moistures, again, the precipitation has been fairly steady over the northern half of the Great Basin recently with showers and thunderstorms over the last week or so. And so we are continuing to see those higher fuel moistures over northern areas. In the south, where we've seen drier conditions, obviously fuel moistures are a little bit lower. We are seeing more curing of fuels in the southern areas and still a mix of green up and mix of various states of curing up north. 100 hour fuel moisture so this show the same similar trend along with thousand hours. So looking at our soil moisture anomaly this is what uh, we're looking at when we're looking at continued green up and grass growth. We still have very high soil moistures over much of Nevada at least the northern half of Nevada into Idaho and Utah. So those are the areas that will continue to see green up continue. We are seeing some second crops of cheatgrass already uh, popping up over the northern half of the Great Basin with this recent moisture over the last few weeks. So again, as those soil moistures remain high, that will continue with the growing season. And then once these soil moistures drop off, we'll see more of a curing process going later into June. Drought conditions have obviously significantly improved over the last year with both the monsoon precipitation and the winter precipitation. And we are currently seeing either abnormally dry conditions or really no drought across much of the Great Basin. The only exceptions are the southern areas of Nevada and to southern Utah that still have some moderate or even moderate to severe drought in some pockets. 
However, looking at the drought outlook on the right, you can see the drought removal is still likely in many of these areas that still have drought over southern areas of the Great Basin, just with the weather pattern that's coming up. So again, still good news on the drought front with respect um, to removal. This shows how our drought has changed over the last year. So last May 2022 on the left, and then current conditions on the right. You can see obviously the significant improvement in drought. We were seeing extreme, even exceptional drought in pockets last year. Most areas of the Great Basin were in some version of drought. And now a year later, almost all areas are out of drought or heading in that direction. And that's both good news and bad news. Um, obviously, drought conditions are, have a different stress on different types of plants. For Nevada, for our fire seasons, we are largely a cheatgrass dominated, low elevation fire dominated. So when we do see these periods of longer drought, that's not really the time when we see the largest number of acres burned in Nevada. It's usually these areas in the black boxes, which are either in between drought or when we're coming out of or entering drought, that we typically see the most acres burned in Nevada because we have more moisture, we have more fine fuel growth, both native and cheatgrass fine fuel growth. So with that being said, when we have more fuel to burn, we have more fuel to carry fire. So we tend to see our bigger seasons in years where we're not in drought. And again, that's where we're heading this year. Um, this year might be more of a transition year before things really pick up next year. Looking at Utah, we've seen, again, similar conditions where the most active fire seasons, or we, at least where we burn the most acreage, are in years that are not really tied to significant drought and similar situations for Idaho. I will say in the higher elevations, when we do have those significant drought years, that's where we see more of our long duration team fires uh, that are more problematic in the upper elevations, but not necessarily as high in acreage as some of our lower elevation, faster moving grass fires. But again, this year we're coming out of drought in all areas, so we're not expecting those um, big issues in the higher elevations with the exception of possibly central Idaho. So now we'll kind of put everything together. We'll look at the larger global scale of La Nina El Nino. We've been in a three year state of La Nina and now we're finally seeing the models indicate those warmer ocean temperatures going into the fire season in the fall. So we are likely transitioning out of El Nino or out of La Nina rather and heading into neutral or if not El Nino later this year. So that is certainly um, going to be playing a role and is playing a role in the weather pattern currently. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from June 6th through the 12th, so the shorter term. We've been in this wetter pattern where we see daily showers and thunderstorms fluctuate around the West and the Great Basin. And this pattern will continue at least through the middle of the month. Looking a little bit further ahead, going into later in June and through September, still this wetter signature of showers and thunderstorms at times across the Great Basin, it may decrease in aerial coverage and maybe intensity going through July and August, or we may have a little bit more breaks of hotter, drier conditions in between those. But at least through June, we're still tying into that wetter pattern. So again, green up is prolonged this year. The curing process will be delayed this year, meaning fire season uh, as a whole. Um, with all available fuels will is certainly going to continue to be delayed this year, probably going into July. However, again, those carryover grasses in southern Idaho, northwest Nevada are really the main areas of concern just for the next few weeks. And then once all fu fuels cure out, obviously that area will be um, an area of interest throughout the summer, but we will have other areas pop up as well. So one thing um, this current weather pattern of active showers and thunderstorms through June is doing for us is really delaying the onset of the monsoon. This moisture is not the monsoon moisture. It is um, really, again, not really tied to those same features. However, if this does delay the monsoon, we could see a drier period in the south, southwest into southern areas of the Great Basin, as indicated here going into July and August. So this could be um, an area to watch as we go later in the summer. Those areas typically quiet down as the monsoon rains start, and that typically ends fire season in July and August. However, this year we might see the drying conditions, so we might see fire season either start to develop during those time periods in July and August or reemerge. So that'll be something we'll be keeping an eye on, uh, both the monsoon and the southern areas going into July, August. So putting everything together, our outlook really hasn't changed. We're still keeping below normal fire potential for June and July in the Sierra and the higher elevations, and also June across the higher elevations of Arizona and Utah. Again, due to that snowpack, that's still melting off and fuel moistures will need time to recover. 
Then we'll transition to normal, which will be fairly quiet across Utah going into July and August. Um, but we will be seeing above normal fire potential possibly pop up here in northwest Nevada and southern Idaho, both in July and August. Again, as we have those carryover fuels and we see the curing of the new growth up there as well, that'll be a concern in the low elevations. We did not add any above normal for southern areas going into July or August at this time, but it is something we're watching closely depending on the development of the monsoon. And then we'll keep an eye on central Idaho later in the summer, but right now conditions are fairly normal through July. That concludes our seasonal outlook for this month. Check back next month for the latest updates.